today I have a fantastic little recipe for a Greek olive oil cake. I brought this back from Greece with me, this recipe, and it is absolutely fantastic. Good thing about this, one of my favorite fruits is orange, so that's the flavor base for this. And it is so easy, as long as you have your shit together here, you are going to be perfect. So, as always, first things first, preheat our oven 325 degrees Fahrenheit or about 150, 155 degrees Celsius. Get that off and going. This recipe is going to bake low and slow for about an hour. Now, to start us off, I'm going to use the help of my trusty uh, mixer. And for this, I'm just going to start off first by beating up three eggs. Now, in this recipe here, it calls for room temperature eggs, so that's what I recommend. Uh, the lady that showed me this recipe actually works for a bakery in Greece, and this is their typical um, loaf cake or pancake that they make uh, on a daily basis. So it's extremely, extremely common. Just drop this down, and all I'm going to do is lock and load, and just start beating these eggs up. The next thing uh, to do is I'm going to use a springform pan. I love, love, love springform pans. They're very versatile, not just for cheesecake, but you just pull them off at the sides, the ring, and you got a perfect little display. So for this. I'm going to line my, or grease my, um, my springform pan with a little bit of my Greek extra virgin olive oil. You don't need much, just enough to get uh, around the sides and kind of get this to prevent or, or get this to stop sticking. So that's perfect right there. Nothing to this. This is ready to go. The next step for this is incorporating our dry ingredients through a sifter. Very important. Two cups all-purpose flour is going to go in just like that. I'm going to take one teaspoon of salt is going in. One teaspoon baking powder is going to go in just like that. Let me get these out of the way. Perfect. And all I'm going to do is, real quick, just sift these through so that way it incorporates them a little bit and makes them a little finer. That way we'll get a finer uh, uh, dough or batter. So get that off and going. So now our eggs are whipped up. They're going along nicely. Time for the next step. Now that our eggs have been in there for a couple of minutes and they're beaten up all nicely, Time to add my sugar, and for this I'm using one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar and the zest of two oranges. We're also going to need the juice of the oranges as well. So if you're going to be juicing oranges that you're going to be zesting or any other kind of fruit, I recommend you zest first and juice later. Trust me, it'll make it that much easier. All right, so that's the zest of my two oranges going in there now. So now while our batter is going, time to get some orange juice happening. And for this, I'm going to need approximately half a cup of orange juice. You got to use the old finger once in a while just to get some of the juice through the pulp. And that looks about right. That looks like about half a cup to me. So, half a cup of freshly squeezed orange juice is going to go in, just like that. Three quarters of a cup of my Greek extra virgin olive oil is going to go in, just like that. And you're going to mix this until completely incorporated. And lastly, half a cup of milk. So now this is all of our wet ingredients in here and they're mixing along just great. Let me get this out of the way here. Make some room. Now, 
Mix these mixies for a couple minutes, two or three minutes or so until all our wet ingredients are completely incorporated and we'll be ready to start adding in our dry ingredients which is our flour, our baking powder and our salt. Now, as I'm going to start adding in my dry ingredients, use one of these spatulas or scratulas, scrapulas, whatever the hell you want to call these. They're good for getting the side of your bowl kind of doing its thing and scraping it off and cleaning it. For the love of Pete, don't be a hero. Turn off your mixer when you start adding in your flour or I promise you it will not be pretty. So at this stage, I'm just going to add about half my flour mixture in here and drop it down and slowly, very, very slowly, start incorporating it. It'll just take a couple of minutes, but no big deal. It's already starting to look like something. It's amazing. It also smells so fragrant, so aromatic. Now it's time to add our remaining flour. And before I do, I just want to make sure I got the edges of my bowl uh, scraped and cleaned. And just add it in there, just like that. Perfect. And we're ready to go. Again, drop, lock and load, and just let it do its thing. All right, batter is done, ready to go. Don't be alarmed if the batter seems a little loose or a little runny. It's, it's fine. It's meant to do that. That's what this is. It's not a very, very tight batter, so don't worry about that. But the flavor, in terms of the way this is smelling now, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right, let me just undo this here. Give this a real quick mix, just like that in here. Incorporate the last bit of the, the zest. And then just slowly just start filling it up, scraping the bottom. Don't miss any of this goodness here because... This is actually, every, you want every little last drop of this. So that's perfect, just like that there. Now, I'm going to take this, pop this into my 325 degree oven for about an hour. Check on it, should be between about 55 to 65 minutes. Ultimately, you're going to do the toothpick test and you should be ready to go. All right, so now my cake is done and it looks like it's done to perfection. It baked off and I let it sit for about an hour, closer to an hour and a half right now, it looks like. So it's pretty much completely cooled, got a little bit of residual heat, but that's fine. So time to take this puppy out of its uh, little shell, so to speak. If you let this cake sit now for a while, it'll actually contract and as it contracts it'll pull apart or pull away from the side of our uh, of our spring form pan so now very carefully just take it loosen it all up oh there it is that's nice actually it worked out pretty good let me see how that there it goes there it is all nice and beautiful looks absolutely perfect took about 60, 65 minutes to bake. So don't rush this. But the orange is so freaking amazing. So you have options at this point. You could A, leave it like this, which is eh, okay. You know, pretty doable. You can sprinkle some icing sugar over it, kind of like that Greek Vasilopita vibe happening. Or uh, you can glaze it, which is another option, which is about a cup of... Uh, cup of powdered sugar to maybe a tablespoon or two of orange juice that'll work or in my case chocolate and in my world chocolate and orange go really really well together so what am I going to do you can do anything you want here basically I'm just going to just take it and slowly just make little patterns around it nothing just do whatever kind of you feel you want to do something like that it doesn't have to be perfect it's homemade. So, a little bit of chocolate there like that. Or you just take an orange slice. But 
an eighth to a quarter of an inch thick. Cut it like that. And very simply, place it in the middle. Just like that. Nothing complicated, nothing fancy. And you have an absolutely wonderful, super delicious and moist cake. So no time like the present. Let's see what we're doing here. My favorite part as always. What a beautiful orange flavor. My kiss of the chocolate syrup. Mm. So good. So that's it for this episode on my Greek orange olive oil cake. I brought this recipe back from Greece and I'm really, really glad I did. And if you try this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you like this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check me out online at kensgreektable.com. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until next time, bye for now.